everybody thank you so much for tuning into today's video today's video is a story time and i'm going to be talking about what led up to me receiving the free gift of salvation stay tuned Um, as I was trying to think about, you know, the the moment where um, what led me to actually wanting to receive salvation, I was like, man, it kind of feels like so long ago, but at the same time, it feels like just yesterday. And I prayed and I was like, God, please just allow me to remember every bit of this story. That way it could help whoever um, maybe relate to to where I was at that time in my life. And I can tell you, today fast forward it was the best decision that i've made um approaching salvation it wasn't something that i was actually seeking for it wasn't something that i was actually calling out for i was just at a point in my life where literally i had an encounter with god and it led me to receiving salvation i remember i was um at a point in my life where just so much was going on I recently got out of a relationship um, and lost my job and failed the very first semester at school that I decided, hey, you know what? I'm single. I'm basically starting over in life. I'm going to go ahead and start my education. And that very first semester, I failed every single class. I was at a place where I just felt super, super low. Also around that time, I was just you know, just going out, feeling empty. I didn't really have that many friends around me, maybe like one or two people, but not anything like constant. And um, I just filled my time with just garbage. It was a definitely a very empty and dark time in my life. And I remember just having so much time on my hands because school was out, I lost my job, and I was, you know, out of a relationship. At this point, I think I was out of my relationship for a good year. Um, so I was just flying, time flying by, you know, just going out to a few clubs here and there, just drinking and just doing the same things over and over, just really feeling like a failure, just really feeling like a loser. And also around that time, if I can be very transparent with you, around that time, I think I was watching just a lot of uh, pornography. Um, just an FYI, uh, that pornography wasn't something that was um, in, in my circle, anything that was like taboo or, or like, oh my gosh, this is a problem because everybody around me basically watched it and it just wasn't that big of a deal and I was just like I'm bored you know hey why not so that's around that time that you know I opened well those doors were already open but around that time it was just like really just really bad so anyways um growing up as a child I struggled a lot with um, insecurity and also I struggled a lot with uh, suicidal thoughts I had a lot of anger issues I fought a lot and you know, I was just angry. I was just an angry person. I was super bitter, felt empty. And everybody around me, for the most part, kind of like was dealing with the same thing. So I didn't feel like um, a, a sore thumb or, you know, I didn't feel like I stuck out in any way. But I do remember feeling um, just super, super, super lonely. And so that's just like a background of everything that was going on in that time. So I'm going to fast forward to what the events were that led up to me uh, getting saved. As I mentioned before, it wasn't something that I was seeking. It wasn't like, you know, I just need to find Jesus. I just need to like get, you know, with the Lord. Um, I grew up in a household where my family, you know, believed in God, but we weren't like church going people. When I went to church, I probably went to church with like with my grandma when I was little. And that's my dad's mom and my grandpa or what my aunt and my aunt i thank god for her because she literally planted so many seeds in my life throughout the years i never felt judged um she's just god definitely 
put her in my life for a reason. So shout out to you, Elda. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for me throughout the years and even now. So it was around the time where I, it was one night I, I went to bed and um, I, as I was falling asleep, the room was pitch dark and um, my dog just started growling. And my dog at that time was probably like two years old. So he started growling out of nowhere. And I kind of was like, you know, I didn't think anything of it. And I was just like, you know what, just be quiet, you know, just lay, lay down. But his growl started growing and growing. And it's kind of funny because I'm, I'm not a mom yet, but you know, I hear parents say that you can tell the difference between baby's cries, like when they're hungry, when they're sleepy, when they feel threatened or something's wrong so that growl for my dog was just like a growl that was I can say that he just was curious and like what is going on it, it didn't really feel like a threatening growl it was like something's in here growl so after you know normally if I tell him to be quiet once or twice he'll be quiet but he just wouldn't settle down and his growl started growing more and more and I'm like what the heck what the heck is going on here? So I remember just, I don't know what I did. I think I, I turned on the light and I saw him inching towards like the foot of the bed. And he was like, you know, approaching this thing, which is invisible and like sniffing it and jumping back and, and grunting. And now he was barking. And I was like, oh, heck no, I'm out of here. So I left <laughs> the room so he like jumps behind me and I closed the door behind me so he didn't get to get out and he's like scratching at the door literally like girl don't leave me like don't leave me behind take me with you so I fell asleep on the couch that night and was like man that was just super weird right so I remember telling um somebody I was like man you won't believe like the weird thing that happened like this and this happened so around that time the friend that I was friends with she was like Oh, you need to you need to get a, a sage stick and they call it a smudge stick. You need to get a smudge stick and like clear out all of the um negative energy or whatever that's in the room. So I'm like, man, whatever, like whatever I need to do, I'm gonna do it. So I remember getting a sage stick or a smudge stick and um came home and, and burned it and went to sleep that night. Man, it was like around the same time, but this time I was so afraid. I don't think I turned off my, my, my television. So my dog starts growling again. He starts like barking again. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like I burnt this stupid sage. It's supposed to get rid of negative energy. And, and I didn't know what to do. Now my, like it got to the point where my dog literally was like, something's going on. So I remember changing my channel to like TBN or something like some Christian channel just to just change it in there and at that time i always knew psalms 23 um the lord is my shepherd psalm and i just started praying that psalm i didn't know what to say i didn't really know how to pray and all of a sudden i like whatever the thing was started like flying around the room and i can tell because my dog was like looking around the room just looking around the room and he was like and i'm like oh heck no i'm out of here so again i left the room and fell asleep on the couch I'm like, okay, surely this thing is not going to happen every single night. But at this point, I started getting concerned. I was like, is this like a death angel? Am I about to die? You know, like, is this, you know, death, the Grim Reaper coming to get me? So the third night I go to go to bed and now like my lamp is on, the TV's on TBN. And the dog starts like barking again. I just could feel chills right now. And I remember hearing something say, like check your email. So I'm just like, I remember it in 10th grade, I was in this group called like the Bible Book Club. And 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 seriously, I probably was a part of that club because one of the guys that, that was leading the club, he was super cute. And so that's like one of the reasons why I was going. So anyways, I remember singing like a song that I remembered all the way from like when I was 15. And I started singing that song and long story short, I checked my email and um, I, I got an email from a church that I would always attend with my aunt, my aunt's church. And you know, you know, when you fill out the information, you fill out your email, and they always emailed me throughout the years. I just never like stay connected or whatever, but they would always email me. I was always on the email list. And I remember that message and the message was like something like, 
Bishop is back and he's preaching the fire series. And I love Bishop, um, Bishop Dwayne Sweeley. I loved him. I loved him so much. And I was like, you know what? I remember going to that church. I remember feeling really good. You know, I think I'm going to, I'm going to die. So I'm just going to go to church and maybe God, you know, has a message for me. You know, maybe I can get into heaven if I go to church, the, 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 you know, before I go, because clearly something is like trying to get me. But I'm just going to go ahead and tell you throughout these whole encounters, I never kind of really felt danger. It just, it was just weird not knowing what the heck was going on, but I never really felt like, um, evil or anything like that so i go to the church and i sit down and you know it, it was okay the first service it was awesome i sat there and i felt really good hearing the message and then i made up my mind i was like okay next sunday and you know it didn't happen again i didn't have those encounters again and i was like okay that that next sunday i'm gonna i'm gonna go um back to church do you know that as I was driving to go to church, I could not find the building. I could not find the building. I'm like, this is, is super weird. The fact that I can't, you know, find this, this building. So I park my car because at this point I'm super desperate. So I start walking in the hot sun. And I'm like, I'm going to run into this church. I'm going to run into this church. I'm going to run into this church. And I walked maybe like a block or two and I found it. And, and now looking back, that was a spirit of confusion. But we'll get into those things later on. So I make it to church. And when I get there, it was like maybe 15 minutes left into the service. And I remember I couldn't concentrate. The weirdest things were happening to me like my mind I just started hearing like weird sounds and I started seeing like weird images and it was just perverse it was just it was like my brain was like like a malfunctioning or something like that so I remember kind of like you know so hot and beat from the sun I'm standing up and then it hears the altar call so then my pastor he calls and he's like, if, if anybody's in here, he does the call for salvation. And I felt like, I felt like I was just being summoned to the front. I felt like I was being pulled to the front. Like, I just felt like I have to do this. I, I absolutely have to do this. I I was just, oh my gosh, just, I, could, I can't really explain the feeling. So I run up to the front, I run up to the altar. No one's up there but me. And I throw my hands up and I repeat after my pastor and I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and Savior, which was the very best decision that I could have possibly made. And I kind of skipped a part. Um, when I was going through that dark time, I actually went into the bathroom at one point and I chopped off all my hair. Like I had like a nervous midlife. I don't know. It was just crazy. I just chopped off all my hair around that time it was it was just pretty bad so anyways I received salvation and I everything changed literally from that day on and I remember coming back home after receiving salvation and I saw that sage stick that I burnt one time and literally now I know it's the Lord I heard throw that junk in the garbage there is nothing that will cleanse you there is nothing that will get rid of any negative energy demon whatever that you're going through but jesus but the name of jesus but the blood of jesus period point blank our faith is not in anything else it's not in those smudge sticks it's not in stones it's not in 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 whatever things people wearing around their necks now like it's not in any of that i'm telling you I was at a point where I tried those things. It just didn't work. What you're doing is opening more windows for stuff to just come and attack you. And you know what? Hindsight is 2020 because when I look back, I know that that was the spirit of the Lord. That was the angel of the Lord calling me, calling me to salvation for three nights in a row. 
three is a very significant number. And I look back and I'm like, wow, God, I wasn't even calling for you. I wasn't even asking for you. I didn't even know, but you came at a point in my life, now that I look back with a redeemed mind and a renewed mind and a mind of Christ and eyes to see and ears to hear. And I was able to look back and saw that that girl was a girl that was dead. She was dead. She was dead. She had no life in her. But now I have life through Jesus Christ. And I thank God for those encounters, for coming and getting me. And, you know, people say, oh, now that you found Jesus. No, I, I didn't find Jesus. Jesus found me. And I'm so grateful for that. And um, and I just want to encourage you, if you have not received Jesus Christ into your heart, you don't have to be down in the pits, low in despair and distress, you know, and, and, and maybe you are down in the pit, low and in, in distress. But if you don't have Jesus, no matter what point you are in your life, you're going to need Jesus. You need Jesus. That is where we get life. And I want to help you. I want to share with you a scripture in Romans 10 verse 9 through 10. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you're made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Receiving salvation that day allowed me to get set free immediately. I got set free from just a lot of the stuff that I was struggling with. Um, immediately, I can tell you, I got set free from the desire of watching pornography. That, oh my gosh, oh my goodness, that is just not good. It's just so much wrapped into that. That spirit of perversion and lust is a stronghold. God immediately delivered me out of that. He walked me through seasons of working on my anger, you know, delivering me from anger, delivering me from loneliness, delivering me from emptiness because his Holy Spirit filled me up. I went through so many seasons of healing and I'm just so grateful for all of that in attention and intention that God had for me and and through the process and i'm still growing i can tell you that you know i don't even recognize the girl that i was before you know why because she's dead i am now a new creation in christ jesus i just love the fact that i can go out there with the truth and set so many people free a lot of times we're in a place in our lives where because everybody around us look like us, we don't think that we are um, in trouble in any way because everything is just so normalized. Dysfunction is normalized. The demonic is normalized. But I thank God that he delivered me and set me free from that lifestyle and that I can be a disciple for Christ and help others by setting them free, by introducing them to Jesus and, and letting them know that they can be healed and they could be made new in Christ Jesus. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I love you so much and I pray that this message finds you well and it encourages you. Be blessed.